Now let's go behind the headlines and get to the heart of the news with our guest commentator who will give us his personal take on some of what you've heard on the program today, as well as other issues of the day. And today I'm joined by the current affairs analyst and dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies at Bayes University, Abuja, Professor Abiodu Adeneyi. Prof, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you. Good to see you, Constance. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. Yes, it has been a while. Yeah, Let's yeah. start with, with our first uh, guest. Mm -hmm. What are your reflections on what he has said concerning this dispute that has been going on for a, a little while? I, I think, it's like you said, it's been really controversial. And of course, uh, maybe an unnecessary controversy, really. And of course, very painful, too. Um, if you look at um, a situation where a Nigerian citizen has committed monies, you know, in excess of $19 billion into an investment, it takes a steel heart for somebody to do that. And of course, you find a situation where um, the head of an institution is trying to disparage it. Um, it becomes even all the more concerning and worrisome, especially for the future of the country, not just for, for the stability and sustainability of the economic economy of the country, but even before then, but the matter shouldn't even have gotten to that stage where this gentleman came uh, to make that disparaging remark, which has been widely condemned anyway. In the first instance, the investor allegedly could Dangote, express some worries, you know, some difficulties, some frustrations that he's been witnessing. At that point where he expressed, where they uh, expressed those are concerned, one would have expected that higher authorities would have reined in, calm him down, you know, create, assure him, you know, they are, that they are supportive of his multi-billion dollar investment, mm. considering the kind of sacrifice um, that, he, that, he, that he was making, you know, to grow the economy of this country. Is it As being case pampered? Could be no, no, it's not about being pampered. It's about commitment. It's about patriotism, you know. It's about, you know, a determination on the part of the government to encourage economic growth, you know, through the instrument, intr instrumentality of uh, private investors. And, of course, who grows the economy, if not the uh, private the sector, sector. Ex essentially. But if, even beyond that, you know, now that the fact that it did not even um, attend to him at that stage, you know, all efforts should have been made to prevent it from uh, snowballing into um, something else. Now that the, the issues are being conflated, the NNPCL is being brought in. We are hearing stories about, um, you know, allegations and counter yes. allegations are flying around. And we're having the MD having to uh, deny that himself. he doesn't. These yes. are absolutely different issues, issues that, sh that shouldn't arise in the first place. Because, of course, we know how the NNPC um, LMD has tried in recent times to study the ship of um, the NNPC in the light of the uh, passage of the Petroleum Ind Industry Act. So that question shouldn't have been brought in in the first instance to conflate uh, the fact that um, Alajali Kodan Gudes refinery is being frustrated by forces, you know, that we don't know where they are coming from. Uh, okay, and so of course we do uh, expect, like Alaji Yabaji said, uh, that the president uh, should um, come in. Yes, if he, if he comes in now, fine, but of course it's a little bit belated and we expect uh, that um, this kind of development, right. you know, shouldn't be allowed to happen again, considering uh, the dire straits that our economy is in, and against the background of the need, you right. know, for us to encourage private investors as much as possible. Okay, so the Dangote Group of Companies, a couple of other businesses, whether it's uh, cement, sugar, yeah. you know, a lot of other products that are produced locally. But when it comes to crude oil, yeah. this is the international market. And you have bigger fishes yeah. in that market. So it's more complicated. It's not just mm -hmm. Nigeria or the West Africa sub-region. So don't you think or do you believe that he's dealing with higher demands, if I may use that word, that are beyond the shores of Nigeria? So yeah, It could be whatever it is, um, yeah, uh, Constance. You know, Nigeria is a sovereign state. Um, by all means, we have to be protective of our own people. And of course, we know that even, even where he finds himself helpless, it is a taking for granted thing that a responsible nation state should rise you know, and support a, a, an investor with this kind of heart. You know, beyond uh, the fact that he wants to make profit, it's also very, very patriotic. If you look at the color and the texture of, invest, of his investments, 
uh, over the years across this country and even on the African subcontinent, uh, continent, you see a consistent level of determination. And what nation states should do, do what they do in those circumstances, just to encourage uh, people like that. And let's even assume for the sake of argument that he probably has done some wrong or that he has stepped some toes, you know, for the sake of argument anyway, that kind of person with that kind of heart should rather be forgiven, you know, looking at the bigger picture of um, the, how, how his investment can be very productive and efficient in terms of triggering multipliers, considering uh, the multiple chains, you know, in, the, in that line of business and how it can um, create jobs, you know, boost the economy directly or indirectly. And against the background of established fact that, you know, he's one of the highest, if not the highest, taxpayer in this country. Right. So, so on all scores, you really you um, have reasons to exonerate him and mm. protect him. You know, not disparaging him. Mm. You know, at this point, have been well emphasized by yes, commentators yes. in the last couple of days. So maybe we need not be it. Right. So where is the place still of government regulation and responsibility? Because there are other players in the yeah. market as well. No, government, and that's the point where I was making earlier, you know, that we're conflating the issues. We should rather focus on protecting um, the Dangote investment, you know, and not be talking about, not be bringing in MD, Mele Kiari, you know, having to defend himself. You know, this man is doing a good job over the years, I mean, in the last couple of years that we know, and that's why the president has kept him, you know, in the wake of the passage of the petroleum industry um, uh, uh, bill, you know, and all of that. So it shouldn't be brought into this fray. Let's face um, the fact of protecting, you know, a worthwhile investment. But regulation is fine, you know, and of course we have a minister of petroleum, like uh, Engineer Yabagi says, who, the, who is represented, who the president is. I mean, that is the, the president that is the minister of petroleum resources. And we need him to come in, if he didn't come in to nip this in the board in the first instance, this is just the time to reassure not just Dan Gote himself, but other local investors, you know, in advance of getting foreign investors. Okay. Because in this kind of situation, you cannot get any long-term inv investors. What you can rather get, I just postpone your investors. And you know right. how short-term, you know, how short-term those can be. And okay. of course, they just want to profit in the short term and disappear from your economy. Let's go to our second topic about the protest and the appeal made by government. Yeah. Our last speaker said he doesn't support anyone going mm. into the streets. What's your take on that? Well, he may also made the point that uh, protestation is very legitimate. This is constitutional, fine, you know. But what is what um, is the contest? In what context are we going to put your protest? You know, um, is it a rage? You know, is it meant to be? Um, what do you call it now? You know, to be destructive. If it is constructive, if it is peaceful, why not? But again, remember that there's always a, a thin line between protestation. And for protesters to grab, to build, to become a crowd, and from a crowd to become a mob, you know, by the time they become a mob, you cannot control them. They start destruction. We are seeing it happening in Kenya, very, very unfortunate. And of course, I think that's that's a fear of the authority. That's why they're probably um, taking measures now, you know, to assuage um, those who are probably concerned. We are all concerned. There's nobody that is not affected, you know. And of course, if people are coming out to protest, um, they're probably speaking on behalf of the rest of us. That's if we are not joining them directly. You know, and of course, the minister also made the point that we're all citizens, we feel it, and we are not non-Nigerians. We're all Nigerians. But the issue now is that what is going to be, the, how will our protest be, you know? And protests in this country oftentimes degenerate, you know, into anarchy. And when it becomes anarchical, you may not be able to control it in but the in manner in which mobs, a mob can be. In a country like Nigeria, where for so many years, citizens have been trying to get their government mm. to work. When you have governments after governments that do not work, there's little transparency, there's little accountability, mm -hmm. then, you know, you, you cannot ask people not to and protest. Constance, because, that, that's yeah, the so question I've actually, um, I've always asked, you know, when we talk about government, I think uh, your last uh, resource person alluded to it. You know, government is not necessarily inanimate. It's an, it's, it's an animate subject that people in government emanate from the people, from the populace. And over the years, we have seen sets of people forming government and repeating the same kind of attitude that we are loading now. You know, so what is it in the Nigerian that is making us, um, you know, unpatriotic, making us, you know, uh, to be self-aggrandizing, doing things that are antithetical or inimical to the progress of this country that ends up repulsing those who are not in government? Perhaps right. these are the bigger issues I think we need to interrogate. Professor Abiodu Adeni, great to have you tonight. My pleasure.
<laughs> well, that's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching.